Good evening and welcome to the 2019 Keystone College Athletic Senior Banquet. My name is John Franquez and I'm honored to be your MC this evening. On behalf of Keystone's Athletic Department, I would like to welcome all the parents, family, friends, and supporters of Keystone Athletics for joining us this evening. Most of all, welcome to all the student athletes who are in attendance here this evening as we are here to celebrate each one of you. This is your night. At this time, I would like to invite Keystone College Director of Athletics, Dr. Matthew Grimaldi, to the stage for some opening remarks. Good evening. Um, first off, um, it's as always a night I always sit there and say um, I'm honored, but also sad. And I've seen a lot of you grow, you know, grow up through the years here. Um, and to see that we have 55 seniors, not all of them here today, because some are competing, baseball's all competing, women's tennis is competing, which is something that, um, a mix of emotions, because um, the number one thing that I'm always proud about is all of our student athletes. I mean, we're here to honor you guys tonight, and the coaches, you know, first off, if you guys can just stand up. I know you don't want to, but please stand up. They, these, these coaches are amazing role models for you. They have been unbelievable, just not for your athletic accolades, all your community service projects, your academic achievements, and the bottom line is what I'm most proud of is just your great ambassadors for this college, and you're gonna be phenomenal along that. So again, coaches, I thank you. I just, got, you know, I just want to also throw out a couple other thank yous to um, my staff. Um, you know, Ryan Nowitzki. Ryan joined us this past year. Ryan, it seems like you've been here about 15 years. <laughs> but Ryan does a phenomenal job. Um, you know, doing, you know, really putting on this banquet, um, doing all the stories, the game management, keeping me semi-sane. Um, but just does a phenomenal job. Um, really, my right-hand man here in the department, and does a phenomenal job. So, Ryan, thank you for everything you do for this department. <laughs> I don't see our trainers here, but our trainer staff, um, Fred, Sean, and Matt, they do a phenomenal job, um, you know, patching you guys up, getting you ready for the field, rehabbing you, um, and just really professional top-notch care. So again, I want to thank them. Um, also, I look out and, you know, a lot of our coaches here at Division Three we do uh, double, triple duties, and, um, Allison Ritter, a lot of you may or may not know, she does, she's our senior women's administrator. So what does that, you know, entail? She is, um, uh, you know, the person behind the scenes that does all of the administrative work, all the things that I want to put off onto her, correct, Allison? But, yeah. but all joking aside, she does a phenomenal job with the academics. Um, she she um, checks all your eligibility, works with advisors, Outreaches to our faculty out there, excuse me, athletic representative, um, Dr. Chad Stevens, who does a really good job this year. Um, but again, Allison, I want to thank you for just being there and a lot of things for the student athletes behind the scenes. Um, I see Dr. Dana Harris here. Yeah. Um, Dana um, is a wonderful supporter um, for athletics and um, you know, just does a lot of phenomenal things besides feeding, I think, probably every team we have here. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but again, uh, I want to thank Dana. Um, and, and also, you know, just bouncing around, one other person too that does a lot of work behind the scenes. I mean, each and every one of you sit there, you know, browser, what about facilities? And, you know, Sam's like, what about my training? So each and every one of you do so much. But Joe Schneck does a phenomenal job um, working with our admissions recruitment on a day to day. So a lot of, a lot of you guys, Joe is working with your coaches um, behind the scenes um, with admissions. And, Joe knew all of you pretty much before you even were a freshman here. Correct, Joe, pretty much? <laughs> but uh, again, Joe does a phenomenal job of you know, just working with everybody along those lines. But again, um, I just want to thank all the student athletes um, and just really wish you the best of luck in the future. I know you're all going to be very, very successful. And without further ado, I think uh, we'll call up Allison, our um, First coach here to honor her team. Thank <laughs> you. 
seniors. Uh, two of them are with us tonight. Uh, I will talk about Gabby first. She is not able to join us. Um, Gabby Truesdale joined us uh, for last season. She had actually played a season of field hockey here as well when she was a freshman. Um, came on board after not throwing a softball for a couple of years and has really uh, made an impact for our lineup. Gabby's a psychology major, so she's planning on continuing her education, moving forward um, with that, and going on for her master's and her doctorate. Um, so she's had a really great year in center field for us. She is up for uh, possibly all conference. We'll actually find out at the call tonight. Uh, but she's done a really, really good job for us and been steadfast in the field and just an all-around great kid. Uh, my two seniors that are here have weathered the storm for all four years. I have only been part of their journey for three of those four. Uh, however, it has been an amazing journey. So we have Alyssa Hughes, who is a senior pitcher and shortstop. Oh, sorry, your hand. <laughs> and we have Sam Manetti, who is a senior outfielder. Um, so they both came in together and uh, couple. There was probably about four or five um, that came in as seniors with them, and, and they are the last two that are standing. So. Um, they have worked extremely, extremely hard in the three years. Uh, they bought into the program. They bought into my coaching philosophy. They've worked very hard. Um, Alyssa has really done a great job in the circle, throwing a lot of innings for us, uh, basically like a workhorse. And uh, Sam has done a phenomenal job tracking balls in the outfield, in left field, snagging a lot of home runs, making sure that nobody's getting too many doubles off of our pitchers. Um, I'm really honored to be able to stand up here and talk about them. It's been, a, it's been a great journey to watch them grow through the three years. Uh, the thing that I'm going to be most proud of when they graduate in May uh, is the people that, they're, that they currently are and that they're going to become. So Alyssa is a sports and recreation, ma ma sports and recreation management major. Um, so she's looking to possibly go into uh, some sort of job with a professional sports team down the road. And she lives down near Philly, so we've got a couple of them down there. Um, and then Sam is actually going to be going to West Virginia University. She's going to continue her education for physical therapy. Um, so the people that they're going to continue to become is something that I'm very, very proud of. They are hard workers, and they exemplify everything that I want in a student athlete. Uh, so tonight, we just, we honor you. So thank you, Sam. Thank you. Moving quite along, we're going to go down to uh, men's soccer, head coach Joe Schneck. Ideally, a lot further along 
in their in their development as people. And um, I think that's one of the most, that's one of the, the best parts of the job is seeing where they come in and where they end up four years later. And so I just want to take time to publicly state that I'm extremely proud of these guys um, that they dedicated uh, this much time to their craft, uh, that they stuck with it through four years. Um, each one of these guys has had personal setbacks, challenges. It would have been easy to mail it in. Um, some of them dealt with career-threatening injuries uh, and others. Um, but to their credit, um, they stuck it out. And I think this group in particular was really rewarding for their commitment to the program. You know, commitment's not a, a real common thing these days, but these guys stuck it out, and I think they got rewarded for, for that as a group. Um, so, of course, I'm proud of them individually, but, but also how far the program's come under their, uh, under their care. So I just want to give you a few statistics for this group. They've heard this before, um, but I think it's worth noting again. Uh, this group made the playoffs every year. They were here, so four years. Uh, they went a combined 42 26 and 4 in their four years. They went 26, 13, and 1 in conference, uh, which is the best four year stretch for any group of seniors in the history of the program. Uh, they earned as a team three National Soccer Coaches Association academic awards, uh, which is given to a team who has a team GPA cumulatively of 3.0 or higher. Uh, they earned the right to play in seven playoff games. They won four of them. Uh, this group played in three CSAC semifinals, two CSAC finals. And of course, after this fall season, uh, they became a really special group in the history of the program in that they leave campus as the first group of seniors to be CSAC champions and to have played in the NCAA tournament. And um, for me, that's just tremendous. Obviously, as much, as, as much success as they had on the field, and we're really proud of them for that, I'm more proud of how they developed as people and um, how they worked through the process. So I just want to thank them uh, for all they put into the program and uh, give them a round of applause. Head coach for field hockey and women's lacrosse, Coach Ashley Irwin, please. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Coach. result of self-satisfaction in knowing you did your best to become the best you are capable of becoming. To say that this group became their best in their four years here is an understatement. The level of success they have achieved both on and off the field is evident through their growth as players and young women. At this time, I would like to give a special thank you to our amazing SID Ryan, um, Ryan had the pleasure of dealing with me right off the bat uh, come the fall earlier this year, and we had a remarkable season, and Ryan, you just, you know, honestly, you did a phenomenal job of, of following us all year um, and promoting us, and I know the girls were extremely pumped to see the game day pictures and all the Instagram and all that fun social media that you do, um, and they were extremely thankful and appreciative of it, as was I. Uh, next, I'd like to give a special thank you to my assistant, Adrian Mallott. Uh, Adrian is also the program coordinator for sport rec management here at Keystone. She's also a former graduate as well. Um, and being a professor and juggling all the craziness of having to deal with me and help coach a team along the way is it's hectic. And Adrian, I know the girls are extremely thankful for you more than they are me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just like thank you at this time. We have a tradition with our team here at Keystone where we do not single individuals out and I find it fitting that we stick to that same tradition at tonight. So at this time I'd like to invite our field hockey seniors to the stage please. We did have four seniors this year. Um, Emily Hawkins, 
finished in the fall, so unfortunately she was not able to make the venture up here tonight with us. Uh, but we will recognize Emily at this time as well. So this group is a special group to me as they are my first recruiting class that I will be graduating from Keystone. Some I have coached for eight years as I was fortunate enough to have them follow me here to Keystone and others for four years, although it really does truly feel like a lot longer. This group is truly, this group truly has gone out on top this year, ending their career on a high note, finishing with a total of 31, year, 31 wins over their four years here, 143 goals, 56 of which came from this year alone. Um, and I'd like to make that stand out because that is actually an additional program record that these girls set this year, and they have also allowed just 23 goals defensively, tying the records for the lowest amount in a single season in CSAC history. So that's huge. And oh yeah, they won their first ever CSAC championship, not only for the program, but also for female sports here at Keystone, and they did a heck of a job representing Keystone at the NCAA tournament against TCNJ facing 42 shots, 27 corners, and they only allowed three goals. To this class, I thank you for your dedication. These past few years, we've gone through so much together and experienced a lifetime of situations all in a short time of four years. I've learned so much from all of you and all of your hard work. I thank you for making me a better coach along the way these past four years. Watching you leave this program will be very hard but I cannot wait to hear of all the great things that you go on to do. So at this time, I'd like to recognize number 12, Kayla Bain, number 14, Alex Smith, and number 19, Allison Berman. Things turn out the best for people who make the best of the way things turn out. Coach John Wooden. When I found this quote, I could not deny how fitting it was, not only for this group, but for the program you have turned Keystone Lacrosse into in your short four years here. During your time here, you have helped build the foundation for what Keystone Lacrosse is shaping up to be. This group has been in the CSAC playoffs three out of four years and has only gotten better every year. Every year, the record has gotten better and not worse. Every year, the program grows and has just recently come to full bloom, going undefeated in conference play and hosting playoffs and championships and hopefully a championship game for the first time in program history in just a short five years of program existence. For some of you standing on this stage tonight, it is not your true sport. However, you have come to love this sport and the girls that you call teammates. Our season is not done yet, so I do not have a long list of stats to rattle off. However, you made headlines all season. You swept the CSAC weekly honor roll that we kind of have held up pride in, going seven weeks straight of either having a player of the week, defensive player of the week, or a player on the weekly honor roll, if not two or three at the same time. And I could go on for hours of all the accolades and things that you guys have done. But just know that I am so proud to stand on this stage tonight and call you my players, and I truly wish you all nothing but the best. So again, I did mention they are dual sport athletes. So number eight, Victoria Homefeld for volleyball and lacrosse. Number 12, Caleb Bain for both field hockey and lacrosse. Number 13, Lisa Cortez 
for women's soccer and lacrosse. Number 14, Alex Smith for field hockey and lacrosse. Number 30, Emily Hutton for lacrosse. And we would like to give a special shout out to our amazing student assistant, Terrence, who did a phenomenal job and he's still working hard with us as well. Um, but we had we had a great group this year, um, and we're still playing, and we still have a lot of season left. So there's not much more for us to say because we're not done yet. Um, but at this time, I would just like to acknowledge them for all their efforts this year. Men's Lacrosse Head Coach Justin Ross. Women's soccer, head coach, Samantha Perra. Um, 
um, they really overcame a lot with positive, positive attitude and um, did really well over their time here. Um, to recognize them individually, Lisa, as I spoke in our full team banquet, she has been a team leader for, for me from the start. Uh, she has held a lot of positive attitude leadership skills um, and has really set the team up for success throughout the entire year. Um, especially when we came to injuries towards the end of the season, um, she was more than willing to fill in multiple spots, um, really lead the team with a positive attitude, and I could not be more grateful for that. Um, um, Christy, <laughs> um, Christy has been an extreme talent for me, um, again, in all positions on the field, especially with the low numbers we had this year. Um, it was a shame I did lose Christy in the beginning of, or more towards the beginning of the season to a career-ending injury for me. Um, however, her support on the sidelines and throughout the entire season has been more than enough to ask for. Um, Christy's going on to University of the Sciences to, um, for physical therapy and to continue her career there. And I know, especially with the injury she has, she'll be great for um, that career that I have with her. Um, with Becca, Becca's here with me today. She did have a, um, an appearance in the senior game. Um, but Becca, <laughs> Becca has been more of an, assist, more of an assistant to me um, this season than ever. Um, she's been a right-hand woman. She's been there with me through everything. Um, and she has helped me with a lot of the administrative work. Um, and also being a support on the sideline. And that is more than I can ask for a senior and a student in college, and I could not be more grateful for that. Um, Jaylene, who's now here with us today, she has to work. She's very committed to take her time as an early childhood educator, um, and I know she's going to go on to do great things for that. Um, but she cannot be here today, today because she's very committed to her work. Um, she's been a strong, positive attribute to the team, hardworking, um, played a really strong position for the entire game. Um, and has been, uh, has ran and has done a lot for the program as a whole. Um, I'm really proud of these seniors, like I said, especially at our banquet is what we recognize. They have done a lot for the program as a whole. I wish I had more time with them in the four year time frame that we had. Um, how, spending one only, year, only a year with them has not been enough, um, but I know they're going to go on to do really great things and I'm a pleasure to know them for even a year. Next up, for men's cross country and track and women's cross country and track and field, head coach Frank Pacetti. Not just as a runner, but as a person this year, and really going to miss 
him and his, his leadership on our team. JT uh, is a, kind of a utility guy. Whatever I would need done, if I had a slot that was open in a track meet that needed to be done, um, he's going to run the 10,000 meters in our conference meet this Friday, and he hasn't run it all year, but he saw an opening and saw we needed somebody stepping up to do that. So I really appreciate your servant's heart. Uh, Sam ran indoor track with us and wanted to try to get herself in shape for, for softball season, and she, uh, it's, it's quite a job. Indoor track, we leave early, early in the morning. We're gone all day long. We get back late at night, and to be a part of that and stick that out is, shows a great, a great deal about her level of commitment and her desire to be better in her support. Um, did I get everybody? The only one I didn't mention is Meg, and Meg is just a joy as a person and as an athlete, those of you who know her, and she's gonna, her leadership is going to be sorely missed. So it's been great. Um, I would just want to say thank you to my assistant coaches. Uh, without them, I started late. Without them, I would have been lost. Strom here, uh, Bree Riley, uh, Jared Conklin, Kareem Mickens. Uh, without them, I would not uh, uh, have been had the success that we've had this year. Did you want to say anything about any of the seniors? You spent a whole lot more time with them than I have. Yeah, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, most of you guys remember me when you guys started as freshmen when I was my junior, my junior year of college. Um, I spent two years with you guys as athletes. Uh, some of you even more than, than that. Um, when I switched over from as a collegiate athlete to a coach, you guys treat me as as a coach. You didn't see me as like a fellow athlete anymore. You, you gave me the respect. You gave me the confidence to basically believe in what I was going to teach you guys the right way. You believed in my coaching abilities. You gave me the confidence what I needed. And I'm very going to miss you though. You were the last class I actually ran with. So, ball in my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, my man, men's basketball head coach, Brad Cooper. for us not to play. Um, so he started off as a freshman, really probably playing about two, three minutes a game. And every year that probably increased up until this year where he was playing about 17 minutes per game. And uh, a very valuable member of our team where we counted on him every game. And uh, you know, the, the thing about Terrence that I'm going to miss is that he's such a great person. Probably the only knock on him probably could speak a little bit more. <laughs> um, I've only probably heard him yell maybe once or twice in four years. Uh, doesn't really get too high or too low. Uh, pretty even keel guy. And um, I'm surely going to miss him. Uh, countless one-on-one -on -one games after practice. We won't get into the results of those games. Um, but 
him just coming up to the office every day. And um, I know that I'll have somebody uh, moving forward that I'll have a great relationship with, and I know that he'll surely do this. Um, next, we have Devin Strickland. The word that comes to mind is two of them. The first word is energy. Um, I mean, he has great energy. On and off the court, when I first recruited him, it was in Houston, Houston, Texas, my first time in Texas. And uh, Strick was playing really well, uh, a lot of excitement in the gym, very up-tempo, uh, he was a hell of a player, and I, I knew we wanted him. And uh, then when I talked to him, he was very respectful, and um, man, I just really wanted to have him in our program. And now looking back four years later, I, I know that he's really progressed as a person, he's really matured. And um, probably the second word that comes to mind with Devin is unlucky. Um, it seemed like every time he got going and really started to play well, he got injured in the game. I mean, I know some of you are eating, so we'll keep the details to the minimum. But uh, we were in the game with Karen, and with the uh, so he played three minutes, he had five points, one assist, had the gym on fire, the energy was great. And then his pinky bone was not cooperating <laughs> with his skin. Uh, it was pretty, pretty disgusting, kept us in Karen for, for a long while. Um, and then this year, Rosemont won the league, and we had a big game here against Rosemont, and Strick had the gym on fire again. I mean, people going nuts, and takes a hard foul, gets concussed, has stitches, misses a few games, and I, I think, you know, my main thing for my seniors is I try to make sure that they use basketball as a tool uh, for later on, later on in life, and I think both of these guys will certainly use basketball as a tool with some of their experiences here at Keystone um, to be better fathers um, when they get older, to be good brothers, um, reliable, responsible members of the community. And um, I, I know they'll do that. So I just want to give it up for them. And of the coaches that we have here, last but not least, women's basketball, Christina Danella.
Now you're stuck with me. Next sport up is volleyball. Unfortunately, Coach could not be here, so I'm going to take his place. There are three student athletes have helped lead Keystone to 66 victories, including 33 in conference play during their time with the program. They have also helped the Giants to four straight CSAC playoff appearances. Now let's meet these three players. First, number eight, Victoria Homefeld. An, outs an outside hitter and prevent major from Smithtown, New York, after graduation, Victoria plans to attend vet school to help pursue a career in veterinary medicine. Victoria would like to thank her teammates and coaches for the last memories and the support that they have provided over the years. Being part of Keystone Volleyball has been an incredible journey I will never forget. Once again, number eight, Victoria Honka. Next up, number 15, Taylor Baby. An outside hitter and business major from Virginia Beach. After graduation, Taylor plans on pursuing a career in coaching, eventually hoping to lead a Division I team to a national championship with teammate Pamela Heitman. Taylor wants to thank the Keystone Volleyball Program, her coaches and teammates, for giving her the opportunity to help this team achieve all of the record-breaking accomplishments within my short time here, and I wish them luck in the future. Up next, number 18, Kristen Larkin, an outside hitter and sport recreation management major from Williamstown, New Jersey. After graduation, Kristen plans on attending graduate school at Temple or Newman to study sport management and marketing. To her teammates, thank you for a great four years here at Keystone. We made a lot of history together with this program, and I am happy I ended up here with you girls. I wouldn't change it for the world. To her coaches, thank you for always making me feel more confident and for allowing me to continue to grow as a player. You both helped me grow into the athlete I am today. I could not thank you enough. Once again, number 18, Kristen Larkin. My apologies. Next up we have wrestling. I'm not sure if this gentleman is here, but anyway I'll give him his due. Ryan Salenza from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Became the program's first ever graduate and was honored prior to the Lycoming match on February 10th with head coach Steve Mike, Bernie Cornicola, and Denny Koppenberg. Valenza graduates with a hospitality business management major and is currently employed within the food and beverage management department as a supervisor for the Wild West Casino in Bailey's in Atlantic City. Congratulations, Ryan. <laughs> Moving on, we're going to men's tennis now. JT Calapitro. Come on up, JT. Also, in women's tennis, we have Divine Scott, but she's not here tonight. So we're going to pick on JT first. JT played his first tennis action for the Giants this season and went 2-6 and six in singles, 1-7 and seven at doubles. He is also a member of the cross-country and track and field teams. And besides that, he also helps us with basketball. He's on our table. And he also helps with baseball, softball, you name it. JT's there. Whatever field it is, wherever Ryan needs him, he's there. So congratulations, JT, not only on your accomplishments on the field, in the classroom, but all the help you give us and support during our activities. Thank you, JT. <laughs> Next up, we have golf. Do we have Tim Lane, Michael Lucadano, and Jake Mitchell in the audience? Which 
Well, we can, we'll begin with Tim Lane. Tim Lane has been a community team player, and his position, positive attitude will serve him well throughout his life and career. Jake Mitchell. I had the pleasure of having Jake on the team for four years. He is a student of the game and works hard and has been a tremendous team leader. Thanks from your coach, Paul J. Petrillo. This one is going to be easy for me. Baseball. By the way, they won today 19 to nothing over Valley Forge, which I'm sure clinches our 14th straight conference, team conference championship. Now we're into the playoffs. Regular season play, regular season championship. Excuse me, I'm a little bit excited. At this time, I would like to take a moment to recognize nine seniors on the Keystone College baseball team. Introducing first a sport and recreation manager major, outfielder from East Islip, New York, number five, Anthony Pereza. Pereza is a career 335 hitter with 32 RBIs, 83 hits, including 11 doubles. Up next, the physical therapy major and pitcher and outfielder from Queens, New York, number seven, Mohamed Koko Hussein. At the plate, Hussein is a 385 career hitter with 106 hits, 26 doubles, 6 home runs, 41 RBIs. On the mound, we'll see the 7-2 with a 2.63 ERA and 65 innings pitch. Introducing next, a business manager and infielder from the Bronx, New York. Number 10, Johan Paniagua. Paniagua is a career 301 hitter with 34 RBIs and 55 hits, including 14 doubles and 4 home runs. Up next, a sports and recreation management major and pitcher from Carmel, New York, number 17, Luke McDonough. McDonough has appeared in 10 career games on the mound and has thrown 15 and a half innings with 12 strikeouts. Up next, a public health major and shortstop from Hazel Township, Pennsylvania, double deuce, Chris Panzarella. If I may for a moment, Starting this year, Keystone College baseball team presented one of their own with a very special award, the Sean Murphy Memorial No. 22 Leadership Award. Sean Murphy was a pitcher for the Giants from 2009 to 2010 before being drafted by the Oakland A's in the 33rd round. Excuse me. In 2016, Sean was in AAA after battling back from injury and on the verge of breaking into the big league when he passed away suddenly. This award is given to a Keystone College baseball senior who demonstrates outstanding leadership, sportsmanship, academic performance, and commitment to the Keystone College baseball program. This recipient of this award will also wear Sean Murphy's number 22 game jersey for the season. The first ever recipient of this award is senior infielder, double deuce, Chris Panzarella. And as I get back to Chris now, He's from Hazel Township, Pennsylvania, number 22. Panzarello is a career 346 hitter with 159 hits, 98 RBIs, 24 doubles, and 106 runs scored. Introducing next a sports and recreation management major and outfielder and pitcher from Rocky Point, North Carolina, number 23, Dakota McFadden. McFadden is a career 354 hitter with 12 homers, 85 RBIs, 98 hits, 56 runs, and on the mound, Dakota is a 9-5 with a 3.55 ERA in 129 and a half innings with 115 strikeouts. Up next, a sports and recreation management major and first baseman from the Bronx from my old high school, Dewood Clinton, New York, number 30, Ronald Medina, my little brother. Medina is, three, is a 309 career hitter with four home runs, 43 RBIs, 15 doubles, and 71 hits. Introducing next, a sports and recreation management major and pitcher from Brooklyn, New York. Number 42, Christopher Adams. On the mound, 
Chris has appeared in 18 games and is 7-5 with 90 innings pitch and 62 career strikeouts. And last, but certainly not least, an accounting major and pitcher from Reading, Pennsylvania, number 45, Wandy Brito. On the mound, Wandy has appeared in 10 games and has tossed 14 and two-thirds innings with 12 strikeouts and a career ERA of 2.46. Congratulations to all these seniors. Once again, the 2019 Keystone College Baseball Senior Class, Teresa, Hussein, Paniagua, McDonough, Panzarella, McFadden, Medina, Adams, and Wandy Brito. Congratulations. They still have a chapter left in their book to fill, hopefully next week, with another CSAC championship. Now we're going to move on to the Keystone Custodian Award recipient. We have the, the Custodian Award is presented each year to the most outstanding male and female Keystone student athletes for their athletic performance during their season of competition. This year, Keystone College has seen many outstanding athletic performances, and at this time, we will present the awards for both the male and female athlete of the year. We'll begin with the female. The recipient is a three-sport athlete here at Keystone, excelling in field hockey, women's basketball, and women's lacrosse. For the field hockey team, this individual is named CSAC Player of the Year and the CSAC Tournament MVP after leading the Giants to their first ever CSAC title, NCAA Division III Tournament birth. On the year, the student athlete scored 14 goals and added 14 assists for 42 points which led the CSAC. On the basketball court, she helped the Giants to a 16-11 overall record with the number two seed in the CSAC tournament, advancing to the championship game and helping Keystone to the most wins in a season since the 2012-13 season. For the women's lacrosse team, this player helped the Giants to a 10-0 CSAC regular season and the number one seed in the up and coming CSAC playoffs. She leads the team with 49 goals 22 assists, 71 points. Your 2018, 2019.